Hey guys, I'm back with The Year of Billy Miller. Oops, the bookmark fell. And remember last time we were reading part two, chapter four, and remember um, Billy thought he was too grown up to, to keep calling his dad Papa, so he asked if he could call him Dad. Chapter five, there, he'd done it, with Papa's help, and it was no big deal. When Mom had come from, from work, Billy and Papa had told her that Billy wanted to call her Mom from now on. Really, she'd said, a trace of sadness in her voice. Really, truly? Billy and Papa nodded at the same time. I'm Dad, said Papa. Mama put her bag of school things on the floor, sat on the, a kitchen chair, and pulled Billy to her. She hugged him, and in the most natural way said, I guess you're growing up. Yup, he said, squirming away from the hug. Done. Sal, who was not yet fully emerged from her nap, had shuffled into the kitchen during the middle of the conversation, her eyes still sleepy. She seemed oblivious to what was really happening. She pointed to everybody one by one. You're Billy, you're Papa, you're Mama, I'm me. As if under a spell, Sal grabbed a cookie and climbed onto Mama's lap, melting into her. Sal's eyelids fluttered, fighting to stay open. Her grip on the cookie loosened. Come with me, Papa. Come with me, Papa said quietly to Billy. I want to show you something. He rescued Sal's, Sal's cookie before it dropped to the floor. He snapped it in two and pressed one half in Billy's hand for the road, he said. They didn't go far, just to the garage. The first thing Papa did was turn off the radio. Billy noticed that the cello with arms had been pushed against the wall, partially draped with a blanket, abandoned. All right, said Papa, clapping his hands. I wouldn't call it a breakthrough yet, but I've been working hard today because of you. Laid out on the table in Papa's work area were several wooden cigar boxes. Each one had various items placed inside it. The inside of one box resembled a landscape, another a city. One looked like a funny face with mismatched watch dial eyes, a doorknob nose, and a black plastic comb mustache. The boxes were in different stages of completion. I've just begun, explained Papa. At this point, I'm just moving things around, trying things out. Nothing's close to being finished. They're dioramas, said Billy. He grinned. I helped you. I gave you the idea. You did, said Papa, smiling, and I thank you. I'm calling them assemblages, but that's just a fancy way of saying they're dioramas. Billy felt taller somehow, bigger, shiny even. He'd never helped Papa in such an important way before. Papa had all kinds of things on hand to use for his assemblages. Bolts, nails, wire, marbles foreign coins, twigs, fabric, scraps, beads, shards of glass, seashells, stones, old black and white photographs, maps. These things were on the table in jars, little heaps and stacks all surrounding the boxes. Check out this one, said Papa. He directed Billy's attention to the box at the corner of his work table. It was a face, a realistic looking one with green sea glass eyes, coils of wire for hair, and an intricate arrangement of small pieces of wood for skin. I'm not done with it yet, said Papa. Suddenly, the face came into clear focus. In wonder, Billy said, it's me. Yes, it is, said Papa. If it turns out, I might do one of Mama and Sal too. You're so good, said Billy. When I'm a whole older, I hope I'm good at something. You will be, said Papa, and you're already good at many things. Billy waited to hear when the thi what the things were, but Papa just smiled at him before making some adjustments on one of the boxes. They shared a pleasant, companionable silence, and then Papa ruffled Billy's hair. Billy could feel Papa's fingers lingering, searching, like when he checked for ticks after they went hiking or camping. Hey, mister, Papa said, you are lump free. Strangely, it was as if Papa's words were coming through his fingers and from all around, pressing against Billy, and Billy felt the full force of Papa's attention. Billy hadn't thought about his lump in a while. He raised his hand and felt for himself. It was true. His lump was gone, a fact. Let's tell everyone, he said. Let's, said Papa, and after that, you can help me make dinner. Can we have macaroni and cheese? I think that could be arranged, said Papa. With his arms stretch, stretched wide, he guided Billy out of the garage. You're a good boy. A good lump-free boy. Thank you, Papa. Yes, I am. Hey, what about Dad? I thought I was Dad. Oh, said Billy. I forgot. He paused. 
He puckered his lips and then bit his lower one, released it. I might forget sometimes, he admitted. That's okay, said Papa. You might forget what to call me, but I know you know who I am, he joked. Billy grabbed Papa's sleeve. He stared up at him. Don't worry, Dad, he said. I'll never forget you. I'm not worried, said Papa, not one little bit. And they went into the house side by side to spread their good news. And that's the end of chapter five, part two. Next time I will be back with part three called Sister, part three, chapter one.